In this study, we use integrative network methods to study how progranulin deficiency, a genetic cause of frontotemporal dementia, leads to neuronal cell death and the ravages of frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is one of the most common presenile dementias and is quite different from Alzheimer's disease in that it presents with usual behavioral symptoms instead of memory and spatial loss. In fact, patients with frontotemporal dementia can have excellent writing and drawing capabilities, as one can see here, while patients with Alzheimer's disease cannot even draw a simple two-dimensional shape at an early stage of the disease. Genetic studies have led to great advances in frontotemporal dementia and in Alzheimer's disease. Progranion mutations are one of the most common causes of frontotemporal dementia, and yet very little is known about how progranulin mutations actually lead to neuronal death and brain dysfunction. So we set out to study this. Ezra Rosen, a graduate student in the lab, set out to develop a cell culture model and use functional genomic studies to understand how progranulin deficiency leads to neuronal cell death. To study how loss of progranulin leads to neuronal cell death, we took a systems biology approach to study the disease at many levels. This is necessary because no system can give you all the answers. We look for a convergence from multiple lines of evidence. In particular, this study is very unique because we use three different systems. We use a cell culture system of neuronal stem cells. We use knockout mice of progranulin. And we use FTD patient brain. First, we developed a cell culture system of neuronal stem cells to model FTD in cell culture, and we show that these neurons undergo apoptosis with loss of progranulin. We further show that there's an increase in polyubiquitination, extremely important because ubiquitinating inclusions are characteristic of frontotemporal dementia. Now that we were relatively confident that we were getting disease-relevant phenotypes in a dish, Ezra went on to ask an unbiased, genome-wide way using microarrays, what are the pathways dysregulated by progranulin deficiency? We first determined the gene expression changes that were associated with loss of progranulin. We first found that the gene expression changes centered on mitochondrial genes and ubiquitin genes, and really interestingly, the wind pathway emerged as being dysregulated with loss of progranulin. The wind pathway is a key growth and survival pathway for cells. The cell culture model allows us to assess causality. And so we could see that the decrease in progranulin caused alteration in wind signaling pathway. However, we need to assess human relevance. So we then looked at gene expression from human brain tissue from a published study, and we're able to see the same network module dysregulated in that study. Both of these studies pointed to a very early change in a gene called Frizzle 2, a, a core component of the wind signaling pathway. We wanted to determine whether Frizzle 2 was going to be neuroprotective or contributory to the phenotype that we were observing with loss of progranulin. We performed several experiments, first in knockout mouse, showing that Frizzle 2 was upregulated in these knockout mice. Then we showed that downregulation of Frizzle 2 causes apoptosis, and upregulation of Frizzle 2 is neuroprotective. This led us to assume a model that Frizzle 2 is actually downstream of progranulin knockdown. Progranulin knockdown causes neuronal cell death and decreases cell survival. As a reaction to that, Frizzle 2 and, consequently, the wind signaling pathway activity is upregulated, causing an increase in cell survival of neurons, both in cell culture and, we believe, in FTD patients. And really, the next step with this work is to further explore the wind signaling pathway as a therapeutic entity with the hope that eventually this will lead to treatment in patients.